Hey everyone, Scott Schaefer, A Theory of Nothing. Uh, thank you for tuning in to one of my videos. Uh, today in this video, I got my lovely wife sitting with me, Ruthann. Um, Hello. You guys have seen her in only one other video so far. Uh, we just haven't, because of time and circumstance and my work schedule and the time it takes me to usually get home and whatever else I have going on, uh, it's not been a very easy process for the two of us to get together and do a video, so here we are. Uh, as many of you know who have tuned into my channel before, or for any of you that are actually new to my channel, uh, I discuss Mandela effects. Um, either my current thoughts, um, random thoughts of the day, um, some things to do with geography, history, um, other changes, but mostly all everything is wrapped up and surmised into Mandela effects. So. Um, one of the things that I've noticed of late, um, seeing um, other people posting up like Brian Stavely and a couple other people that have been talking about certain things are, again, we're in the, um, which as you guys all know who, have, who know anything about Mandela Effects, we're in a kind of a constant state of fluctuation, um, whether that be us hopping in or out of realities uh, or our reality itself changing around us that um, you know we're, we're again winding through the stage of flip-flops I'm trying to I'm driving here and I'm trying to pay attention to the roadway and different things like that so you're gonna have to forgive me here for a minute um, that uh, one of the things that just got brought up that I know some people talking about was the chick-fil-a symbol uh, uh, rotating back into having the K in it. Um, some of the other things that uh, someone else was talking about. Um, oh, did you did you hear anything that anyone else was talking about lately? lately? Uh, uh, just... In a flip-flop category? Flip-flop? No. Not that I can think of at the moment when it comes to flip-flopping back and forth. I think the, you, were, you, were, you were mentioning something about the Stones. There you go. The Flint Stones. It's no longer, well, it always used to be the Flint Stones. And then it changed to the Flint Stones forever. And now it is back to being the Flint Stones. Yes, you can search it on Google. So, as I'm saying this video, as well as a lot of us know, it could very well be changing back into Flint Stones on me. Uh, as we're doing this video and before I repost it. So I have no way of knowing that information until I can actually sit down and Google it. Even though my wife has a phone in her lap, she's typically not up to date with Google and stuff as we have conversations. Well, I mean, you know why the name, why they were called the Flint Stones in the first place, right? You're asking them, not me, I'm assuming. Okay, well... Flint has to do with how fires were struck. Used the man, when, cavemen made fires, and that's what he used to make a fire. Actually, that is incorrect because cavemen did not okay. originally make fires but, with flint. But that is flint was actually not discovered until yes, further down the road is, with alchemists. That is what they used to name them with because of the starting fire. Cavemen. We don't even know if cavemen really existed. Well, using that, that her coming off with that statement kind of broaches into the whole point of um, evolution theory and things like that. And, uh, you know, the, the government and the school systems and everything trying to uh, indoctrinate all of us into believing that we were fish who, well, started as amoebas, turned into fish, flopped on the land, started breathing air, started growing legs, crawling around, turned into monkeys, evolved as monkeys, started using tools, so on and so forth, eventually shed hair off of our bodies, though some of us still have a lot of hair. Um, and then eventually became more and more and more intelligent over millions of years. Um, and they have to say it's over millions of years because if you date back to even the, um, you know, biblical reference of Christ, you're talking a 2,000 plus year span nowadays, uh, being as we're in 2019, and man has not evolved hardly at all from uh, 
the days of Christ, using my quotey fingers there on one hand, because the only proof that Christ was even an actual person versus a fictional character was um, documentation, and not even great documentation, written down by disciples and accounting for it, who then was passed down by word of mouth and by supposedly duplicated and repeated text, as is most any and all of our history. So, you know, we try not to be 200% dismissive on, on historical information because the only way to have a true recording of the past is through recordings of data. And that was always done by hand, by a person. It was always at the fault and the mercy of said person. Yeah, but um, you, if you look at it, though, even to this day right now, our history or anything that is, that is put out there news-wise is a lot of it's fabricated anyway, so... What do you know, mean our history is fabricated? I mean, I'm talking about, like, what's going on right now. We are making it, as this world is supposedly moving along and time is moving forward, supposedly, that 60 years from now, anything that's happening today happened to months down, you know, down the road. I mean, everything that's happening is still, news is being fabricated. So, back then, things were being fabricated, too. Not everyone is honest and and, 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 te and tells the truth. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, you, unless you see it for yourself happening, you don't really know if it's anything that has been reported in the news is really true. That, oh, you're trying to talk about historical current current historical situations like natural disasters mm -hmm. and things that are happening all around the world that are supposedly taking tens of thousands to hundreds of thousands of people's lives and things like that. Right. And unless you live in those disaster zones and have actually experienced that, the rest of us in the world are gaining that information from untrustworthy news media sources. And I say that because if you go back through history, to, to allude to what she's talking about, um, several hundred years ago, media sources were actually created, supposedly, for the whole purpose of recording historical data and informing the people of current events and past events and upcoming events. And they were supposed to be, back in that day, <laughs> trustworthy actual accountings but we don't know that they ever were now all of us in the, the the me community can go back to when we were children and think of and i want to say all of us most of us um, because unless you had more hippie based parents who did not trust media at all or government or anything like that and you basically lived out in the woods and you never had anything to do with television, never had to do with anything media orientated. Um, you believed that media, newspapers, and all that stuff were trustworthy sources. Uh, that they were all held to a government standard to uh, disclose information accurately and correctly. And now, as we all know, that media is all driven on making money. It's not about getting to the truth and exposing truth and truthful situations. For them, it's all about uh, making money. Um, that gets into, like me, why I'm not monetizing this channel. And I have not monetized it and I won't monetize it. Um, I'm, I've thought about doing other, in, you know, a different type of channel or something like that that I could monetize just for the purpose of making extra money. But that would have nothing to do with the ME. I don't feel that this is chargeable information that I release. Um, I'm sharing our knowledge and our experience, and I'm, I plan on doing more with my wife and trying to get her more involved in videos, even though she sucks with her camera thing, because she's like leaning out of focus way over here instead of being in on it. Sorry. <laughs> and, um, you know, th that's what this is. This is, this is our, <laughs> as trustworthy as it can be, our digital accounting of our experiences yeah. um, in this world and this reality. So, um, I think the only reason I haven't really 
done too many videos is because I'm still I'm, I'm, I'm on my search of figuring out what's going on, uh, trying to put something to A lot of weird things have been happening with me and I've just been trying to figure it out trying to come to some type of I don't know epiphany I guess you want to call it uh, just trying to figure out what this world really is right but to as I explained to you before this this channel and what I've done on this channel from the beginning of uh, know, my, and you, you see my videos I watch um, and every now and again it has things to tell me about my videos. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, but he's gonna as I told you guys. I'm going to have my opinion. But I, at the same time, he may be right. I might be wrong. Or I might be right. And he may be wrong. We're both wrong altogether. But that's not what this channel is about. No. This, this, I, is, I, not, I this is not a scientific-based fact channel. This right. is a vlog of right. my... Right. Of, of my experiences my thoughts, mm -hmm. um, my gut feeling about things, right. and my observations, my real world observations. Mm -hmm. um, which is what I was trying to explain to you before is, and I'm trying to get her to understand that, this is not meant to be a discover the whole entire story before we talk about the story. I this know. is a, a journey of discovering we are incorrect. H having a thought and going down that path until you get steered away from that path or told that, you know, or, or discovered that that path is incorrect. Right. There's so many different thoughts and opinions. And, you know, the big thing was, and I had talked about this before, is I've always been a big anti, anti-God person. And I still am a very big anti-God person. I'm not a devil acceptor either, or, or a demon acceptor. I believe there is a creative something. I, believe, I don't know what it is. I believe there's something that's that's out there too that is a crea the creator of all of this, but But you were No, no, I was big. I was big into the religious situation because I would say back, you know, just growing up around it, I had a, a situation I think it was back around 2000 It might have been 2012, and I woke up. I had a, I, 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 I pushed it off as a dream, but it was the only. It was. It was. It felt more than a dream. It felt real. It felt. I only talked about it because it makes me cry. <laughs> well, explain to but them. I, explain to them what I'm it is. You can't just to, leave them I'm on the cliffhanger. I'm going to explain to you. I I woke up. When I woke up, I my heart was pounding. I I, I couldn't stop crying, and that was because there might be some napkins in there. I I um felt like I was in heaven. I was in a room that was lit completely white it was so bright but it wasn't like it was hurting my eyes bright it was like every there was no end there was no seeing a door there was no seeing nothing everything was just white around me and there were three people and I called them people because they were shaped like uh, they were humanoid they were shaped like they were humans but they glowed like a really pretty goldish white color. They were. Did you see their faces or no, anything? No, they were. Everything was just a, a a light of energy, and I'm looking at the three of them, and they were having a conversation with me. They it wasn't like I was seeing mouths move. I could I don't know if I was hearing their thoughts or, or they were actually speaking, but that is where I was. I was I felt happy. I felt love. I felt, besides the love I was giving off, I felt the love in return. Why is that such a sad okay. circumstance? So, this 
the situation is where there, it came to the point where I had to make a decision. It was a decision or a choice. All I know is they asked, that one of them asked me, have I chosen yet? What is my decision? And I said, I choose to stay. I, I choose to stay. I want, I, I want to go, I, I said, I want to go back. I want to stay. I want to be with him. I, I choose him. Those were my words. I choose him. And, and they asked me if I was sure. And I said, yes, I choose him. And then the hand, there was a hand that reached out. It was glowing. And then there was like, it looked like a, a, a circle, like a, a medallion or something. I can't see your hand down there. I'm sorry. It was like a medallion. I still can't and see your hand. You got to actually hold it way up here. Hold, there's no reason for me to hold my hand up. She's doing this and making a circle on there her was hand. A medallion, there was a medallion in, in the hand. And all of a sudden, there was like a, a it looked like a pedestal. And it was blue. It was white, but inside of it was like a blue liquid. And once my decision was made, they dropped it into the into the top little pedestal of, of water, and I woke up. So I woke up from this, and when I did, instantly I felt, like I said, it, it, it didn't seem like a dream to me because when I woke up, I felt the regret, and as, I didn't understand what that choice was when I said I choose him, because that was confusing to me after I woke up. When I made that decision, I obviously knew what it was all about, but when I woke up in bed, I felt the regret, and why did I do that? Why did I choose? <laughs> So I felt like I chose to leave heaven to be back here. And I thought my choice of saying I choose him was I chose my husband. But I don't know if that was even what the whole thing was to begin with. Now I look at things differently. Now I look at things as what was that real decision? What was the decision when I said I choose him? Is, is it, I, am I choosing something that, to be with my soulmate? Maybe we were meant to be here together, I don't know. But it was just the weirdest dream that seemed more than like a dream. So, coming to have all this happen around me that's going on right now, it just feels... It feels like it's more. It, 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 that something about that meant something more. So, did I die in my sleep and get shoved back into my body? I don't know. No idea, but I felt like I, wherever I was, I was there for a long time. And then, recently, I would say I started having these 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 feelings of when I make a decision on something and it's not like just a regular, you know, you're choosing to go here or go do this or whatnot. I'm having these decisions when I'm choosing something sometimes now that everything is like a, it's like a, uh, I, I see stuff like a, someone throwing a stone or something into a pond, how the ripple effects, it's just a wavy and doesn't make any sense. So what she's talking about with that is kind of like in the matrix. Remember when they're when they're looking at him, when they go zooming into him and then it's like a TV and like the screen just kind of flutters and it like shows a distortion. I think that's kind of effect that you're talking about, right? Yeah. I mean... It's like a, like a digital, it's almost like a digital distortion and then it's fine. But she sees that like just looking in the mirror, just looking straight ahead. But look, it's like, it, it, a lot everything. of times it's like, it, it, sometimes it's almost like, uh, uh, like a, a, my son had to make a decision. We had rabbits and he had to sell off some of the rabbits, the babies. And I had two of them in a, in, in a box 
and I said, you need to just choose one because you wanted to keep one. I said, go ahead and just choose the ones you want to, you know, the one you're going to get rid of, which one you're going to keep. And the moment he made that decision, as I'm looking in the box, everything just like around me just rippled. Once, once he said those, that decision, it changed something. And so it's almost hard to explain I, it. And I would and I would equate that to not that something per se changed. I think because of us now being more aware and awake to like, the weirdness it, in the world, that what she actually, what you actually saw, and what she was uh, observing, was uh, a cement in our timeline, a cement in our in our current reality. Uh, in other words, the, the decision was fluid, and it, and it got whittled down to, with our son, to one rabbit or the other rabbit. But the outcome, at getting into the quantum thought process of it all, was not a fixed outcome. It could have been one rabbit or the other rabbit, or he could have even decided to have gotten rid of both rabbits because he didn't want to make a decision between one or two. And then what happened was, when he finally made the decision of which rabbit to keep, it solidified the structure of the timeline to now that being the outcome. Right. But you're able to now observe that, whereas before we became fully in sync with being aware of the strangeness and weirdness around us, that decision would have probably been made and you probably wouldn't have noticed shit. You probably wouldn't have seen waves or, or the weird ripple effect or anything. It would have just been he made a decision and life moved on. Right. That would be my, my guess going back to where we're at now and what we what we experience and what we observe every day. Yeah. Yeah. But in line with that with what you were talking about with the the um, afterlife experience. Mm -hmm. Um that almost and we getting into a different category a little bit here now, sort of, but that almost takes it to either an interdimensional or an extraterrestrial type of alien-ish experience in the afterlife, because if this was just quote-unquote heaven, why would there need to be this tubular canister of fluid? And why would they have dropped this medallion or coin uh, back I, I into have it? No, I have no explanation on why because like I said I was but it's almost like a matrixy type of game video game issue if you think about it it's like you were pulled out of the matrix so you're aware so now you're having this conversation with like the doctors or whatever that are around you I that are part of it they were. And it's like they stuck a I... coin back into the game and put you back into play in the video game and does it not kind of sound like what, what you're talking about I know you don't have that same feeling about it but to me that's kind of what it sounds like and it may have been a fully real experience right that may have been the moment because for me and you and I've talked about this before for me the weird the really really weird shit around me and and logo changes and things like that for me started right around 2009 that I started picking up and noticing these things yeah see I don't I, I didn't, didn't research know, it but I didn't know anything about all of this the changing and whatnot until well I I noticed the changing I just say I don't know anything about the Mandela effect until was it like a year or two, two years from now or something like that. I don't about know. you know, it's about it's going back on about three years ago when we actually discovered oh, the yeah. Mandela effect. Yeah, maybe at least three years ago. But we both, and I talked about this in a previous video. We both thought, individually knew shit was going on around us or thought shit was going on around us. But like me, I know I thought I was just losing my goddamn mind. Like I was just, I had so much shit going on that I was just misunderstanding or misinterpreting things. Everything I saw that was changing, I just thought it was because they were rebranding and relogoing, and I didn't really a lot of that too. You know, I, I came to movies and stuff. I guess I just didn't really go back and watch. I mean, I watched them and watched them and watched them when they first came out, and then move on. And it's like goes back and watches old movies all the time. Sometimes I do if it was really, really good, but I already know the movie by heart because, I mean, there's certain movies you just, you, you just know. But I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's, 
it's like I said when I had that happen to me I didn't really think anything of it I thought you know this I just had a, a crazy dream but at the same time I felt it I felt it and I I don't talk about it because when I do it it still makes me upset and cry because okay. it is a a how do you put it it is a it it was just an unbelievable feeling to go through that It's a, it was just uncomfortable. All right, so we're not we're we're at a friend's house right now. Um, so I don't know if you want to keep talking. You just want me to go in there. I'm assuming you want to go and say hi. I'm so say hello. what we're gonna do is I'm gonna. It's already at 25 minute mark anyway. So I'm gonna clip off this video here, and then we'll try to do a continuation. So did you want to wrap up your thought? Because I, I don't. What were you starting to say? I was just talking about the way everything felt, and then you know, noticing things changing, but not realizing that. So there was something really going on and you know didn't know about the Mandela thing going on then reaching out trying to find out why other people are you know experiencing the same thing and then I don't know it was just kind of well you didn't know anything about the Mandela effect until I actually proposed you it told, to you you told so. me about it and then it broke my heart because then, then it had to go through the whole uh bible stuff and the changes there okay she's getting ready to cry I'm getting, getting ready, ready to cry, so, so we'll, we'll, we'll do a follow up video